Hi, Misha. Oh, boy. What do you want, Stanley? Did you know that African wisdom contributed greatly toward the development of modern medicine? Oh, I didn't know that. Like how? For example, in Western Africa during the Songhai Empire, about 1457 AD, when Europe was still in its dark ages the city of Jean had a medical school which employed 100s of teachers, and was world famous for training surgeons in difficult operations such as cataract surgery. They also taught the pharmacological use of over 1,000 animal and plant products for the treatment of medical illnesses. Many of these same medicines in pill or liquid form are used today. Oh well that's amazing. Tell me more. For example, castor seeds, the source of castor oil, was used for constipation and castor oil is still used today. Kaolin was used for diarrhea and is still used today in kaopectet. Night blindness caused by vitamin A deficiency was treated with ox liver, which is rich in vitamin A. Vitamin C deficiency was treated with onions, which have a high vitamin C content. More than 40% of modern pharmacological medicines are derived from traditional African medicinal herbs. Another example is the Yoruba of Nigeria used the plant Grawalfia vomitoria as a sedative or tranquilizer to calm agitated or psychotic patients. Modern medicine was able to isolate a substance called reserpine from this plant that was marketed for the same purpose. Reserpine was also discovered to profoundly lower blood pressure and consequently became one of the antihypertensive medications. Wow. In America, in 1721 an African slave named Anesimus taught his master an age-old African technique for smallpox inoculation in which a pustule from an infected person was ruptured with a thorn and then used to puncture the skin of a normal person. Subsequently, during a smallpox epidemic in the Boston, Massachusetts area, Dr. Boylston inoculated 241 healthy people by this African technique and only six caught smallpox. During the American Revolutionary War, General George Washington ordered his entire army inoculated against smallpox by this African method. In the 1790s, the British doctor Edward Jenner only changed the African smallpox inoculation technique by using a less dangerous kind of smallpox term. This is interesting Stanley. I am going to do more as a chun West Africa's history. As recently as 1888 in Europe, the mortality rate was almost 100% for mothers delivering their babies by caesarean section, that is, delivering babies through the abdomen. Consequently, the operation was only performed to save the life of the infant. Dr. R. W. Falcon, a missionary, shocked the European medical community when he published in the Edinburgh Medical Journal in 1884 that the Banioro surgeons in Uganda perform caesarean sections routinely without harmful effects to the mother or the infant. Oh my! That is astounding! Yay Misha! A group of European surgeons went to study in Uganda for six months before they could successfully learn the advanced surgical techniques demonstrated by the Africans. The Europeans were also taught sophisticated concepts of anesthesia and antisepsis. For example, they were taught to routinely wash the surgeon's hands and the mother's abdomen with alcohol prior to surgery to prevent infection. This antisepsis technique had not been practiced in Europe prior to this African visit. Hat is super cool. So because of these Africans, caesarean sections became more common. Wow, why don't we learn this information in school? I don't know, Misha. Africans have contributed greatly toward the development of modern medicine and deserve to be better acknowledged in our medical textbooks, but they're not. That is why most people, including me, are ignorant about West Africa. Most people only know about Egypt. I wish more people were like you, Star and Lee. Let's go out to eat. You can tell me more.